This episode is brought to you by freedadcourse.com. You are always one conversation away from changing your life. And the power of hello is something that I subscribe to every single day. And I'm always saying hello to new people everywhere I go. Increasing your opportunity, increasing your connection, and getting access to the solutions to the problems that you are facing, whether you're on active duty or just beginning your veteran transition, or you've been transitioning out for 20 years. On the other side of hello are the solutions that you're looking for. Again, head on over to freedadcourse.com. Get your five-episode audio course to create more connection, create more friendships, and get back to living the life that you're trying to design. Dory 1, this is Fire Team Delta. Dad's coming home. Welcome to the Military Veteran Dad Podcast, where it is our mission to bring every dad home. I am your host, Ben Colloy. I'm a United States Marine veteran, husband, and a father. We will bring authentic conversations to inspire action in your life so we can close the gap between the dad you are today and the dad you want to be tomorrow. This is the Military Veteran Dad Podcast. Today on the show, we have James Van Proan. He has served in the Air Force for 20 years and retired in 2015. He grew up in northern Michigan. He's been married for 22 years. He's got two girls, a 20-year-old and a 16-year-old. He runs the Ragnar Life podcast. He is a strong supporter of the Ragnar Relay. He runs a veteran and business show, and he also creates a Facebook group called the Military Podcast Network to bring other military podcasters together. James, thanks for coming on the show. Great to be here, Ben. Really uh, excited and looking forward to talking to you today. Can you describe a little bit what your family looks like right now and fill a little bit of gaps in that intro? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, like you said, I um, got married just just after I get, came into the Air Force. Um, we just celebrated our 22nd wedding anniversary a few weeks ago, so uh, November 7th, um, 1996, we got married in I've got two girls. My oldest is, uh, like you said, 20, and youngest will be 17 in January, which is kind of surreal and crazy that, that it's been this fast. But, it's almost over. Um, yeah, and uh, the the Military Podcast Network is actually a, a podcast, so it's going to have multiple shows. We're kind of early on, so we're going to bring different shows related to the military audience onto the network, so that's what that is. Perfect. <clears throat> When I ask the question or when I describe, what does it mean to come home to you? What is it, what triggers in your mind of something related to those two words? Um, yeah. So I, I like that you're doing this kind of a podcast um, talking about fathers. Uh, I was mostly had a family that the time I was in for my 20 years, the, the big part of that was as a family and I was uh, highly deployed as a, I was in IT and I did tactical communication. So from an early time in the military, I'd end up, I believe, having nine different deployments. So I was, you know, gone more or as much as I was home, did a year remote in Korea as well. So um, to me, it was anytime I was home from a deployment or with my family is to spend as much time as I could and, and do as much quality family stuff as I could. So I think for me, that's what it meant in the setting of a military. Cool. Uh, during my what was the biggest transition struggle that you ran into when you were trying to reintegrate back into the family that had learned how to live without you for so long? Yeah, I think that's part of it. I think, uh, and I remember hearing different people talk when we come back and they would um, give us briefings, I guess, and kind of talk about family, you know, what to expect coming back and that you'd have to ease into it. And I think that's part of it. Like I was fortunate to have a spouse that, could do very well. She was independent, so she could definitely handle things when I was gone, which I, was good for the deployed location. And then when you come back, for me, it was just um, kind of easing into, if you will, taking over or set. You know, the, you change the dynamics. Or I did when I would come back in, so um, I did my best to to kind of ease in. So not whatever systems your your spouse had for me, I. I didn't like, okay, you know, that's ending today. You know, we're going to start doing something this other way. It would just be flexible and just kind of ease in and kind of have a slower approach to the integration, if that makes sense. And probably meet your spouse where she's at, not try to move her to some position differently based on your expectations because that wouldn't work out well either, I can imagine. 
Yeah, and I, and I believe, I mean, I'm a sports guy, so I think it's in that same, like, let's say you're a, a, a free agent possibly and you come on a team that's already established and then you kind of ease into what they're doing. Even if you've kind of got your own style and, and the way you operate, normally it works best if you kind of integrate yourself into that situation. So I think of it in the same way. Very good NFL sports analogy. <laughs> I know your kids are a little bit older, but I'm a big believer that kids spell t- or love T-I-M-E. Back in the day when you used to come home, what were some of the simple ways or time bombs that you could share with us to help connect with your kids that were some of the simple things that were toy related that were just making a fort with cardboard box kind of things? I think for us, uh, we're a very active outdoor um, activity family. So we would do things like hunting, uh, hunting. I, I didn't do a lot. Of, I'm actually here hunting right now in Michigan, but we um, would do more camping, fishing, did do some fishing in Colorado. We were stationed in Colorado Springs during quite a few, uh, a little over four years of when my kids were, I think my youngest was four at the time and then oldest was about seven or eight. So we would do on the weekends, especially the long weekends that we had, we would go camping and hiking and those kind of things outdoors. Um, traveling, we do we do that even a lot. Still, we actually a few months ago went for that the Ragnar race that you talked about. They had their very first one over in, in Germany um, this year, and so we all four actually my oldest flew out. I was in California um, this year going to school, and we all flew out of um, Washington State. We took a military hop as a family over to Germany for a couple of weeks and did some traveling over there. So it's things like that. Um, just doing that we've kind of continued to do. Um, and there, there's a little bit of expense, but it's not real expensive. Like we would find places that you could camp, tent camp really for free by the, by the river in Colorado and did things like that. So those are, those are things I think that would, would talk about what you're talking about just spending quality time of, you know, campfire and, um, stuff on the water. Stuff like that. Did you find that the um, experiential outdoor stuff, provided kind of a healing power to maybe some of the tears or rifts that would come from your deployments as a way to just kind of like reconnect with nature, but then also the family without distraction. I think so. Um, I never, to be honest with you, I never really thought of any of that that way. Like we were, we just, I, I wanted to make it a priority to do those things that you'll have memories of. And even though, you know, time's going to go fast, it was, always fun to do so it was just something that was like kind of family time and I mean really to this day if we were together as a family we would do those kind of things still so it was a continual just fun to get outdoors you know who doesn't like a good campfire you sit around and you talk about different things and just spend spending time and you don't have a lot of the distractions you have in other environments so you definitely it's quiet um you know you got like the stars and the, you know, the mountains in Colorado out West. So things like that were definitely probably a, a plus for that. Awesome. When you, when your kids are a little bit older now, they're, so they're getting closer to this question becoming a reality. When they're talking with their friends at a bar and they're 30, what do they, what, what do you want them to remember about their dad or what do you want them to share? Um, I think uh, we talked a little bit of this in the pre-interview. Um, to me, I, I like humor. And so, um, I believe I have a good sense of humor, but I just enjoy people having fun and, and having a good time. So I would, I would want them to kind of talk about, you know, my dad was there, you know, when he was, was, he was gone kind of serving for our country, but when he was back, we just had a good time and, um, you know, he, he always had a sense of humor. So, and I, I guess as I look with my father and maybe in my, actually my grandfather as well, I spent a lot of time with him growing up. So they both really had a, you know, always, had a smile on their face and, and t- telling the jokes and just happy. So anything related to that, I would, I would want, I don't, I can't think of a specific story I'd want them to tell, but any of the stories, you know, because I think, you know, let's say if I get a text from my oldest daughter, a lot of what she says ha- is centered around humor. So, you know, th- those are the kind of things I would, I would want her to tell or, you know, both of them tell stories that were just kind of a funny story that happened that, that they look back and you know, found the way. Kind of reminds me of uh, almost like 
not to take life too serious because sometimes it's very easy to get caught up into it. Even as dads, we think of all the things we have to try to do every day and try to fulfill and people's promises we have to fulfill and life can get so heavy. So we always just remind your kids that to live a little life a little bit lighter than you think you need to because there are serious things, but there's a lot of things in life that aren't all that serious. We don't need to get all worked up about. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think, you know, if you, I mean, and that's the other thing is definitely uh, we've tried to raise our, our be you know, kind of have positivity around everything that we do. And um, I'm a, I guess in a good way, like just wired to be an eternal optimist. So, but I think laughing and humor and having fun, are all things that, yeah, I mean, even in the military, you know, you have stressful situations, but, you know, probably as, as good as anyone in the Marines, I mean, you have those environments. It, the more you freak out or don't have a good time, I mean, you're going to already got to do it. So if you can kind of quote unquote embrace the suck, but just really have a good attitude about it and, and be positive. I mean, that's really can go to really to anybody in their life and anything you're doing. Reminds me about meditation where you, you teach yourself to whatever you're feeling to, take two steps back from it and really look at the, whatever you're experiencing and understanding it and try to not get caught up into it like a wave into your mind. Yeah, definitely. What do you think your scariest moment as a dad was? Um, this is an interesting question. Uh, I don't, I can't think of, I mean, I guess when you're younger, like say when your kids are first born, I can't speak for a mother, but definitely like there's not really training to be a, to have your own family in that sense to where it's just like you see the baby born and you're like, Holy crap. Like, you know, hopefully I don't screw this up or, you know, there's just no really guidebook on how to be a parent in a sense. I mean, there is, but there isn't like you kind of just do the best job you can. So as they get older, you just hope you can raise kids that aren't knuckleheads and to, to put it bestly, but, or to put it in the best way. And I think fortunately for, for me and our, our situation, we've, we've been fortunate. Like our, our kids so far have made great decisions. You know, I couldn't be more proud. And I guess that's the, also you, you, I'm, you would, you would be proud no matter what, but it really is satisfying to feel. And it's not just me. It's not like a father thing or a mother thing. It's like collectively I've got good parents. My mother-in-law has, has helped. So it's like all these, uh, people that have been around or even people when you're deployed that, that are other families that have, have helped out where you're gone. It's all these people that have really fed, felt or uh, fed into them. So I think I was maybe scared in the sense of some of that and um, you know, the, of hoping they'll be healthy, but we've been fortunate. They've, we've had good health. Um, so I think maybe the, I hope that answers the question. I, there were, it wasn't like a, Oh no, like every day I thought about it and was scared of it. But I think that I can't think of anything else. I was really scared of as a father. It was just like that challenge, like that you have, that's a lot of responsibility and not that, I mean, in the military, you have a lot of responsibility too, but this felt different. Like, you know, here's lives that you're influencing and you just don't, you know, you want them to be good members of society and really it reflects the parenting, you know, like, okay, look at these, these kids really are good at this or that. And, you can a lot of times replace or trace that back to your, the parents. So that was, that was what I kind of thought of for, for that. It reminds me that um, I can't remember what interview or podcast I heard it on, but a lot of times people describe raising kids as, Oh, you, you got to raise good kids. But if you raise good kids, sometimes they never grow up and life requires people to grow up. So in many, almost all cases, you can still have a little bit of kid in it, but you still have to have to grow up. And to reframe the, the, the way you raise your kids, not to raise great kids, but to raise good adults. Like that's your, our mission is to take something that's completely moldable, imply an impression that creates an environment them to be a good adult that knows right and wrong, to be kind, to be servant leaders. And that's where I'm always, my mindset's trying to go is how can I enable my kids to be those good adults and make those decisions when I'm not there. And successfully launch out of the yeah, house. Yeah, and I, I mean, <laughs> that's another important. Part. Yeah, and I've definitely, I, yeah, and I definitely, for me, feel that's been in a way the validation of that is as I watch, you know, my kids now kind of transition, especially my oldest, to where she does make good, very good decisions, and is doing well, you know, kind of now post living with us. So 
that was really too when you get when they get a little older it's like kind of slowly changing your role of being really heavily parenting and then just guiding and transitioning you know to where they can um, make it kind of on their own after you know because you're not going to always be there and I think there's parallels to how we operate in the military of you know you kind of um train you know you kind of have your sub your, your supervisor or somebody kind of with you showing you the way but only for a little bit of time and then you're held responsible okay now it's your turn to go on your own and then train the next guy so i think same thing with your kids is you know as as you have older kids it's now transitioning to to watch them be good adults so i, I do like that analogy as well and it sounds like leading to the next question, what you want your family's legacy to be, you want them to essentially be people that others want to emulate, good role models even, that you know, I want to be like that girl, I want to be, or when she's older, I want to inspire her to be like your kids almost. Yeah, and I think for me, it's been where especially, I mean, both of them, but I, I talk a lot about my oldest because she was in a way, we had two, only two, so it was our first one to kind of look at, to where to me, we trained her to be a leader. So it was like, okay, you've got this good upbringing now go lead in these areas, not just, you know, be a follower, but you do have great training have great background. Now go lead out. And then same thing, you know, as my younger one um, does certain things, it's like they're both, but, and I think you were referenced a little bit. We talked about a pre-interview um, definitely servant leadership. Like we've taught that and, and modeled it as a family where, you know, we'd like to, in a way, we volunteered at a business organization as I transitioned out of the military. We went to football games, which was kind of fun, but we would volunteer to do the Tampa Bay Buccaneer games. They would have attack flags up top of the stadium. Um, so we would all four go to the games and volunteer. Um, so there was a lot of that kind of thing where we would go help out. Um, sometimes, like, on the weekends, we would help families, like, uh, with cleaning up maybe older people's houses, like their, their yards and stuff like that. So, um, I definitely wanted to show them and they've done well at that of, um, being servant leaders and being, and, and really giving back and, and wanting to help other people. So, so that's been a kind of a cool thing to see them really take that and run with it. Um, I know one good quick story that I can say, like there was a summer camp that, my brother and I went to when we were growing up in Michigan and my older brother last year had said, Hey, you know, they, they, cause one of our friends that we grew up with now runs that camp and they always need volunteers, of course. So my youngest, um, actually came up and helped last year and my brother went back, I think earlier this year and they were talking, I'd already heard this anyway, but they were talking about how they, they loved having her and how good of a helper she was and, and really, she kind of stood out so that was I mean of course makes you proud as a parent but that, that just showed kind of that validation of the servant leadership where she's you know whether it was washing dishes and no matter what she was doing she had a great attitude has a good personality and and really you know just being willing to to give of herself um you know, no matter what you know because some people may be like oh if I only make a certain amount of money or you know they need motivation to do it she just kind of naturally does it so um, I'm, I'm kind of proud of that. And what, you, since your girls are a little bit older, is there anything looking back that you feel like I did that successful helping them discover what type of woman they were or like what they wanted to do as they grew older? How'd you help them fall into their life in, in some way? Um, I think that's been a little bit of the challenge in a way is that I've, I have a lot of ideas and I see things they're good at, but in the end of the day, just like all of us, you know, they, we all want to make our own decisions. So I've always, I guess, because I, I've operated this way for my own life, for the military, it's like, I want to treat people how I would want to be treated. And so, um, especially my youngest had kind of that heart, strong willed personality to where like, I believe either one of them is very talented and can do anything they want to do. And I've definitely talked about that to them. But they, you know, I want to make it to where whatever they decide, they've got our support and, and really let them have their own journey of what exactly they want to do as they kind of um, search that. So for, for me, I think, especially as I kind of got out of the military and really went towards entrepreneurship, I um, wanted to put them in position of volunteering with us at 
different business organizations and to be around business owners. So I wanted to expose them to those kind of things. So at least they saw, Hey, there's another way you don't have to just go automatically, you know, nothing wrong with working a job, but you don't have to go work a job for the rest of your life. I mean, I've, I've definitely pushed that hard of, of, Hey, look, entrepreneurship, you know, if you're, if you do your own thing, if you create your own life uh, the way you want and kind of build a business around the things you like, um, I, I've definitely pushed, I pushed that a lot or I've encouraged that. Like I've, I've really articulated that message, but still, if they were to choose that or not, it, it, it's okay. Like at least I just wanted them to be aware. Um, so I think it was a lot of that growing up of just kind of watching their personalities. Like I said, my youngest is strong willed. So there was a, a balance of like, yes, you have to discipline, but you also have to not crush their spirit. So I was definitely very personally mindful of that because I guess I look at myself in a little bit that way where, yes, I was in the military, but like my personality, even now, I mean, is a little bit like I I respect my elders and I listen to people's opinion, but I just, you know, kind of have that mindset is a little outside of the box or, I mean, everybody kind of uses that cliche, but just like, well, why can't we do this? What if we did that? It's always trying to kind of push that boundary. So um, I I think because I was kind of that way, like my daughter, I could see a lot of that in her. Um, But uh, you know, as a parent, you just have to, like I said, balance of, you know, cause you have to discipline. It was, a, it, that was tr- tricky, definitely of, of, you know, having a personality like that. But my oldest is not really quite like that. She was very, not necessarily just quiet, but she was more like a real follower and, you know, just didn't have that same kind of push the boundaries. That's very good um, stuff right there. It made me think that what you we're doing successfully is making sure you open doors, same lessons of like experiencing the outdoors, but also learning how to experience life in different flavors and what flavors are out there that you can go hang out and do. And that there's not just a vanilla flavor of life of a job that you work eight to five and you have this repeat job that you feel empty at the end of the day. So that's, that's really powerful stuff right there that you were, you were able to, help them explore their curiosity in life and figure out where they wanted to go. What do you think the biggest difference in the dad you are today versus the dad when you got out? And I know it's only been a few years now, but is there any difference in how you show up as a dad versus when you were in the military? Well, I would think, I would say in a way it has changed a lot because when I was in the military, my kids, I kind of talked about a little bit, but we're a lot younger. So it was a lot more, I know it sounds weird, stable in the sense of where we, moved every few years but they stayed at on the bases did a lot of stuff on the bases so then because of their age my oldest was almost out of high school when I got out of the military so um you know she started to actually in, until last year we were kind of all still in Florida but she was more kind of going on her own and wasn't you know, we were all kind of going our separate ways in a little in a, in a direction like I chose to go out to California so my oldest knew she wasn't going to come out and live with us there um, so just because of the fi- family dynamics, I think that changed. And now where before I was deploying a lot in the military, kind of with my military job. And when I got out, I, I chose to kind of go more of the business route. So it wasn't where I was traveling anymore with my job. Um, that dynamic changed a lot. My youngest uh, was still kind of has been with us the last few years, the whole time. But, um, you know, she's almost 17. She's almost you know, she's uh, taking her junior and senior year this year with homeschool. So uh, I, I think just the place that we're at in life has changed a lot where, where the military, we were kind of doing a lot of going from base to base and involved in base activities. And then once I retired, we kind of did more stuff. We were together more. That was definitely different where I, I was not gone. And then time we were gone, I could take them with me because a lot of them, as you know, probably in the military, you travel, but you can't really most of the time take your military or your family with you to these places that you're going. So uh, those dynamics has changed because of the ages they are, um, you know, and, and this is kind of almost the next phase of our life of being, you know, where my kids will both be out of the house. Um, so that's definitely changed a little bit where you go from having two kids with you to only one. And so that changes that dynamic. Um, and then actually, I think I was telling you, my, my oldest, I'm sorry, my youngest has been, the last three months with my mother, uh, helping her with my mother and 
or with my grandmother, like uh, she care gives. So it was actually just to my wife and I for the last few months. So, um, so I guess in this stage of life, definitely it's kind of changed from having in our family and, and really doing a lot of things together. Like we talked about early in this show um, to now kind of being more the next chapter of almost post having kids at home. And then you know, in the future, I'm sure with having uh, grandchildren and those kind of things will definitely change, but um, I'm hoping that'll be a little ways <laughs> off. So, we'll see. so it sounds like you were uh, pretty good at coming home to your family, even when you were deployed for a dad that comes home and always walks into the door every single time and, and struggles with it. What advice would you give him? Um, I think we talked a little bit about it is just being mindful of the ramifications in the future, because of course we can, I can look because I have kind of a long time frame and where my kids are at in life. Cause I know a lot of people kind of, we, we end up having kids early in our life, but it's those things that your kids will remember later. It's like making our, a point. And I guess to, to talk a little bit about what we said, like I knew because I was the type of person that was, going to be gone a lot and I knew that like it I made a conscious effort that if I'm home to do the best I could to really spend time with the family and do family things and so it's those things that because we're all busy and 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 we're no none of us are perfect so like I could have still spent more time um and then there's those days that you're you know not in as good a mood or something so it you know it's those things it's just being mindful and really being purposeful to to make long lasting memories and that, you know, your kids will have a good experience uh, when, because it, everybody says this as it goes fast and it, it's crazy to kind of be on a show like this to talk about the past, how, you know, it seems like only a few years, some of these things were, and then looking, you know, that was quite a while ago. So it just goes so fast. I find the, um, so my kids are six, four and two. And so almost, let's say pretty much all of their life has been documented on my iPhone. And, and to an extent that's never been done in human history. And it's so often you can scroll back into your pictures and barely even remember that that picture ever happened. And while we've always had pictures in our life as kids, no matter what generation you were part of in the last hundred years, the fact that you have so much documentation of almost every smile, every high, every sometimes the lows, it is, I, I find it's more and more like just a constant reminder you need to slow down. Because you can be like, man, they were just doing that. And when you see the look on his on their faces and you're like, man, he's growing up so much. I know I'm just being gone for a week sometimes coming home. I'll be like, man, my kids are feel like they're talking like three times more advanced when I left. And just it's so crazy how it all frames up when you come back to look at it in the past like that. Yeah, um, definitely. So that that just makes it so much more important to every, you know, not every time means something. So you, every time, no matter if it's for, you've been gone for a week and come back, or if you've been gone for months and come back, it's just being present and really, you know, having those memories and making those memories that are, that are good and positive memory. As a wise Kung Fu Panda says, the present is a gift. That's why they call it the present. Yeah. And, and that's, and I guess for me in my life now, I think you start to, as you get a little older for, at least for me, you start to, I didn't appreciate it probably 15 years ago as much as I would now where, you know, every day you, you never guaranteed the same, you know, like if you have good health now, it doesn't mean three months from now, everything can change. So you just have to like really be in the present, like you said, and live the best thing you can for the day and for that experience. Well, Jim, this has been an awesome interview. I look, I'm looking forward to getting it released where people connect with you. And if they wanted to look up you more. Yeah, absolutely. I'm on all the social media, LinkedIn, Facebook. I, I kind of live on my phone, so uh, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, uh, yeah, that's the best way. I mean, any social media, so. Um, and we've come a long way. Our first time was I was in Prague for work and you were at a target in San Francisco working on your homework, I believe. Yeah, I was, uh, in California, um, most of this year. So, uh, fortunately I've, I've gotten friends that, uh, I've introduced them to, to people and vice versa. So I was actually able to, to meet you and got to see you in, in person in Orlando in September. So. So I really look forward to seeing what you do with the show. I, I think it's a good thing. Um, 
you know, it's uh, not easy necessarily being a father um, and a husband, but I love that you're really trying to do something like this. So like I said, um, you know, that's how easy it was. We just talked on Messenger and Facebook Messenger got introduced there. And before you knew it, we just jumped on a quick video. Got to love technology. And we, I didn't know it when James first came on the show, but it was his first podcast interview. And I think you crushed it. So hopefully one of many now that we broke the seal and people can start hearing you more in the people's shows. <laughs> That's a wrap, and thank you for listening to today's show, and I really hope you enjoyed it. The lifeblood of any new podcast are the reviews. If you haven't reviewed the podcast yet on iTunes, I would really appreciate it, and you will help us get the message out to even more military veteran dads. As John Maxwell says, if there is hope in the future, there is power in the present. Dads, it's time to come home.